Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Hey, what a great day. So it's uh, my privilege. I, my name's Nick Barbarian. I have the privilege of serving as the uh, rear commodore here at the Chicago Yacht Club. And it is truly my privilege, privilege to welcome all of you here to the 109th running of the Mac race. Uh, hey. Yeah. This multi-generational event has brought so many families and friends together for so many decades and has added to so many rich memories and relationships that I know all of you are going to be continuing to add over those over the next few days. So good luck to you all. It's going to be a tremendous race, I'm sure. I want to take just a few moments to thank our many, many volunteers who make this event possible. Uh, I'd like to start off with our race committee that's uh, headed by Don Maxwell. These are over 20 people that literally work all year long to bring this event uh, available and possible to you. So let's give them a big round of applause. We are very blessed here at the Chicago Yacht Club to have a race committee of over 100 people. Uh, it's headed chaired by Nancy Arnold. And today, you're our race director, Behela Getz, and your principal race officer, Olaf Anderson. So big applause, round of applause for them. Great. We've got a wonderful group of judges that are going to be in introduced by our chief judge, Fred Hagedorn, who's out here. Give them a big round. Applause. Our uh, chief safety inspector, Lisa Gaston. Big, uh, all the safety inspections taking place here on the island. And our, our chief measurer, Ron White. Rick Land. And our on the water director, Jay Kehoe, together with our regatta director, Libby uh, uh, Doss. Big round for them, making all this possible. Our friends at the Coast Guard, who were here with us last night, will be here this afternoon. They'll be escorting you up to the island. Uh, the staff of the club, let's give them a big round of applause. Let's have all their help and assistance. And we hope you enjoy it while you're here. Um, and and uh, last but not least, all of our sponsors, our presenting sponsor, Wintrust, and our many others who have provided the financial support to undertake the enormous resources to put this event together. Thank you, all of them. Let's them up. So it's my privilege to turn the event now over to Don Maxwell, chair of the uh, 109th Race to Mackinac. Hope to, uh, you all have a wonderful race. Hope to see you on the island, and hope to see you back here for the 110th. Have a great race. Uh, good morning. Thank you for all coming out here. Hopefully everybody's well prepared and well caffeinated as we move forward here. Um, just a few quick more announcements here and then some of the people that Nick had mentioned will be coming up to make their official announcements and then we'll get into the, the good stuff and get Chris up here for the weather. Um, first, and this is just sort of the disclaimer, uh, is that this is a courtesy announcement. Make sure that uh, everything that you see is from the documents, that they're going to be the, uh, the primary and the correct source. So the sailing instructions and the NOR take precedence on that. So this is just a courtesy announcement. If there's any conflict, go to the documents. Um, and then as far as the race, Nick had thanked all of our good people on the committee, and that's great. We've got um, a lot of people that put a lot of time into this race, but then the sponsors, and there's many of them present here in the parking lot and elsewhere, and I want to just give a quick thanks to them. Of course, to Wind Trust is our presenting sponsor. Um, and then for our supporting sponsors, there's Beam Suntory and CFA, which is the Chartered Financial Analyst Society of, of Chicago. Um, our clothing sponsor is Gill, and they're in the tent over here with the race hats and all the gear. I encourage you guys to go over and see some of the good stuff they've got. They've got a lot of great gear out here this day. And then our, our sponsors going through here uh, is Team One Newport, Remy Crontreau, which is Mount Gay, and you guys will see the Mount Gay around, of course, and there was some red hats out there. Uh, Harkin. Harkin's got their trailer over there providing services for you and any kind of hardware you might need last minute if you have anything you need for your boat. Michigan Avenue Magazine, which will be running the parade of boats on, uh, actually on Saturday, so you guys will already be on your way north here before that starts here, but Heineken, Grand Hotel, Starline Ferries, if any of you guys are going uh, back and forth on the island, we encourage you to use them, Sunology, North Central Air Charter, if you want to get off the island quickly, Tattinger, Squid, which is, uh, if you guys know that, that's the, uh, that's the weather service, um, and Chateau Desclans, West System, Hyatt Hotel and U.S. Sailing. So thank you very much for all of our sponsors for everything they put in. <laughs> U.S. Sailing has been kind enough to bring us what they call their buzz bar. So if you want an espresso or a little more caffeine, you can pick it up on the other side there. Um, as far as following the race here, I encourage you guys to pass out the links for, for the Facebook and Twitter. And we also have a, uh, 
uh, a YouTube channel where one of our, our members, uh, Wynn Sodani, will be doing uh, color commentary as we all head up the lake there. So for anybody sitting at home, they can watch that. And then the other big one here is, uh, is YB tracking. You all have your YB trackers on, on your boats there. Um, in about an hour, I'll be sending out a link for the low bandwidth links to be able to go get the data while you're offshore and maybe looking to uh, have the, the, either for expedition or you're just getting them on phones and low cellular signal. So I'll be sending that out to the skippers in about an hour here coming through. Um, and then I'm going to pass it off to the important people here. Our next person up here is Fred Hagedorn, our chief judge. Thank you, Don, and uh, I'm going to be very brief. First, I want to thank our uh, other judges who've come in from out of town. Um, we have Don Makovicki from uh, Long Island and uh, Steve Wrigley from uh, North Carolina, both uh, very experienced judges around the world. And I uh, just want to wish you all a very great fast race and uh, hope to see you at lots of parties and uh, not in any serious conversations with any of us. Thank you and good luck. And, and now the guy who you really care about, uh, the man who's going to oversee the race from a standpoint of getting it started and getting it going, uh, our uh, PRO, Olaf Anderson. Yes, it's my turn. Uh, I'm just going to briefly touch on what we, you need to do to get going this morning or this afternoon. Uh, you're all going to have to check in. So the race committee have you all accounted for, and um, let's see where are we skipping over. Oh, that's the start line, yeah. So uh, we'd be if you head out straight out to the outer break wall, you will see where the start line is. The break wall is a little bit to the left of there, and. Um, yeah, you can come. All right. So all the course marshals, the, the guys that are trying to keep uh, the starting area clear, uh, will have that flag. And the orange flag is the orange flag. That's just your start line flag. Just have, you know, the lighthouse on it too. And by the way, I'm going to introduce uh, our regatta director. Ms. Halligatz. I'm not doing this alone. This, this is way too big for me. <laughs> so I'm having my right hand, which is Hella, and on the left hand side, I would have Vicky Matthews, who's my deputy. She's not here presently. But the three of us are like trying to do this, run the race for you guys. And uh, yeah, that's the start line right there. And for check-in, you go to the pin boat, not to the signal boat. So, and try to pass the signal boat, which will be on this, on the left side here, which probably be on your starboard. But you never know where the winds, where, where the winds are coming from. So just. Try not to go through the start line. Try to go on the outside, but close enough for them, for them to see you. And that is our pin board right there. You check in at the pin board, not the signal board. What? Only for the cruising start, yes. Right. It's a completely different procedure for, for the... For the please make sure your are on. Thank you, Jay. And that is our signal boat, the carrier. Most of you have seen this boat before. And the... Next up, I guess, is Ron White, who's the chief measurer. Question? Yep. What side is the signal boat you want to signal on? Oh, the pin boat for check-in. Which side do you want to 
I want you to, to go on the outside from the, from the, you know, try not to cross the start line. I don't know. Oh, there. Where's Ron? <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Ron White here today now. Um, so Ron's big announcement for today as chief measure is that we will be scoring this under ORR all purpose. So you'll hear more about that when Chris gets up. Um, but just a quick one here. I want to make a quick introduction. He's got a couple words to say. Is uh, and Nathan Titcomb from the uh, offshore office of U.S. Sailing. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so as uh, Don just said, I'm Nathan Tickham from the Osher office. And for those of you who don't know what I'm doing or what we do, is uh, you've, we're the ones who have uh, helped you guys get all of your ratings for the ORR rule. So just want to say thank you for everybody getting your information in early and working with our system. And uh, for those of you who experienced last year, just thank you for your patience. And uh, good luck and have a safe trip up to the island. And now uh, Chris Bedford with the weather briefing. going mobile. Oh, the forecast, hey, good to be back here again. <laughs> Seems like I was just here. Forecast is pretty straightforward. I think I only have like 38 slides, so it's not really that difficult. Um, next slide, please. Doesn't look like this is going to make it. Uh, whoops, maybe it does. There we go. All right. So my standard disclaimer, you all have seen this a thousand times before, and we know that the weather changes quickly and sometimes dramatically on the lake. Um, I'll give you a forecast here. It's my best guess of what's going to happen over the next few days as you're on your way up. But uh, you need to keep monitoring conditions, and as you'll see in the following slides, we do have a risk of some thunderstorms on the lake um, Saturday night, early Sunday. So you'll want to keep monitoring the NOAA weather radio, especially if things don't look right. If things look like they're changing, you'll want to uh, get the weather radio on uh, your VHF and, and check in or if you have other sources. But remember that the National Weather Service, their responsibility is to protect life and property. And uh, they're, they're the ones that you should be listening for the, to, for the official forecasts and warnings. Um, so right now, this is the severe weather outlook for today. We don't seem to have any problems. We've got a nice, cooler, drier air mass over us at the moment. But if you look up in the uh, upper plains there, northern Minnesota, you'll see that uh, we have a marginal area of uh, possible severe weather. And that looks like it may be shifting down, uh, associated with the front, as we'll look at in the forecast here shortly. And so that tomorrow, and especially tomorrow, uh, night, uh, there is a slight risk of some severe thunderstorms developing over uh, Wisconsin and uh, the UP of Michigan, and then possibly sliding southeast across the lake. So that's the time period that we're at risk, I think, for severe weather. Um, and uh, so you'll, uh, you do want to keep monitoring the forecast as we go forward. All that action by Sunday morning uh, slides out to the southeast, and we get another nice period of weather. Uh, arriving during Sunday and, and into Monday. So uh, at that point, it looks like any, any risks are, are gone, and so Monday looks like uh, it's fine. This is, one of my, this is one of my favorite statements. I use this one all the time, predictability too low. It's my standard line. All right. Um, so here's the current surface map as of uh, this morning. Um, it, it might be a little bit hard to see. This is the map from the National Weather Service. So Lake Michigan here is is in the middle. Uh, that uh, 1013 that you see in the middle of the lake is actually the central pressure of this low over here. It looks like somebody's mouse slipped. And um, uh, so the lake is right here. And what we have is uh, this low pressure area finally clearing out of the lake. This is the system, part of the system that was uh, creating all the uh, weather the middle part of this week, earlier this week. Uh, that's finally clearing out to the east, and we have a nice little high pressure area, which is uh, up over Minnesota now, 1,023 millibars. That is going to be moving to the southeast. It actually looks like it's going to move to the west, just to the west and south of Chicago uh, tomorrow. And uh, uh, so right now, between the low pressure, remember the air is flowing 
uh, counterclockwise, or as some of my friends say, anti-clockwise, uh, around it. So we've got flow like this, and then around the high pressure we have clockwise flow. So that's giving us a northerly gradient flow down across the lake this morning. And uh, that's what you'll be departing in. This is the uh, satellite image. This is infrared image from earlier this morning before the sun rose, so it's a little bit difficult to see. But there are, the, uh, if you see these light gray patches here, these are the, the lower clouds that we have passing over us right now. Uh, but you can see any deep cloud cover, which is indicated by this enhanced uh, imagery, is well off to the north and uh, east and southeast. This is where most of the rain and, and potential weather would be occurring. We actually, just, we actually have just this low cloud. And this will break up a little bit over the course of the day, especially under that high pressure as it starts to move closer to us. This is the radar, which is relatively clear. A uh, few uh, showers and thunderstorms down to the south, but really nothing uh, to worry us for now. And uh, clear, as I said, we got that high pressure sitting out over uh, Minnesota, and nothing's going to develop out in that area. So the weather looks pretty good uh, today through tomorrow until tom later tomorrow after, uh, evening when we might get some thunderstorms coming in. We'll look closer at that shortly. Here's the current wind field on the lake, and you can see this uh, sort of northwest flow. It's actually pretty moderate across much of the lake. Down here it's a little bit lighter. Uh, it is going to be filling in a little bit uh, this morning, uh, but basically northwest winds across the lake now. And with that flow we are generating some uh, uh, seas sort of in the two to four foot range up in the middle part of the lake, uh, down uh, under a foot right down here at the moment. But, but uh, with that fetch and the duration of the breeze today, some of those uh, seas will be moving down uh, into the southern part of the lake. Yesterday it looked like it was going to be a much rougher start for you, um, but t today it looks like uh, the winds are far enough to the left that uh, we're getting more of an offshore here, so it actually will keep the sea state down just a little bit in the southern part of the lake, so it looks a little bit friendlier than it did on yesterday's forecast. Here's the water temperatures, and they're actually uh, pretty warm, especially in the uh, southern half of the lake. And uh, we put up the water temperature chart not only for your comfort, um, because that's basically at night especially, that's what the, uh, the air temperature will be, but, but it also reminds us that a lot of the breezes that we get here on the lake are thermally enhanced or thermally affected. So at, at, in the daytime when the land is heating, if the, the lake is cold, then we get stronger lake breezes. At night, uh, the land cools off, and the water stays relatively this same temperature, and then we get land breezes flow off the land. And, and this year, there's nothing particularly special about this, maybe a little bit warmer in the southern part of the lake than normal, uh, which would tend to indicate slightly weaker lake breezes in the daytime. Um, but uh, it's not like last year where we had much colder water uh, to deal with. So here's the uh, surface forecast chart for this afternoon. And you'll see that high pressure that I pointed out earlier has moved sort of to the south, southeast, southeast, uh, and is heading toward Iowa out to the uh, west of Chicago. That low pressure out to the east is moving up into the uh, eastern lakes and uh, lower St. Lawrence Valley. Still holding that northerly flow, though, between those two systems. And so that's going to be driving our wind primarily for today. And that's the wind you'll be starting in and uh, dealing with for the first few hours of the race. So here's the surface wind forecast. Now these are streamlines that indicate what the direction of flow is. Um, and then the colors indicate the um, wind speed. And the scale is over here on the left. Um, I took it up to 80. I don't know why. Um, just hopefully you don't see that. <laughs> um, but anyway. We've got, uh, basically, you can see sort of uh, 10 to 15 knots across much of the lake here, and uh, a little bit lighter uh, closer to the shore where the flow is coming off the land, so it's slowed down by the friction um, over the land, and then it accelerates as it gets out uh, over the, the smoother water. Now, during the afternoon, what happens, two things happen. That high pressure moves a little bit closer to us. Whoops. There we go. That high pressure moves a little bit closer to us, so our gradient is starting to ease off, so that's going to decrease the wind speeds. But also during the day, it is heating up on this shore um, here. That, this cloud cover is going to be breaking up with time, so we'll be getting more and more sunlight through. 
and uh, that's, that uh, allows a little bit of a lake breeze to try and develop along the uh, Wisconsin shore. I don't think it's going to be a full turn to lake breeze, but it does suggest that the wind is going to get lighter, especially on the Wisconsin side uh, further to the north. So the suggestion here is that it looks not too bad off of um, Chicago and even a little bit uh, up toward the uh, Illinois-Wisconsin border that northwesterly kind of hangs on. But further north than that, the wind is actually going to get quite a bit lighter. And so while it's OK to stay close to shore initially, I think we're, we're all going to be looking to get offshore um, uh, by this evening to stay away from this light patch here as best as possible. Uh, now, this is the forecast for just after midnight tonight, lo uh, central time. And uh, that high hasn't moved a, li a whole lot. It's moved a little bit closer to Chicago. Uh, and the gradient, that is the distance between the isobars here, is starting to increase, which means we, we're looking for lighter winds uh, at this time. And uh, uh, the other thing to note is with the movement of the high down to the south of, or toward the south of Chicago, initially we had northerly winds. Those winds should be backing more northwesterly and eventually westerly across the lake overnight. Uh, and into early tomorrow morning. I want to draw your attention now to two things further out to the northwest which are going to affect us. The first is this little low pressure area here uh, over the uh, North Dakota with uh, Minnesota border. But more importantly is this cold front up to the north. And that cold front is going to drop down and we're going to see that cold front move into the area uh, to, um, tomorrow night and, uh, Sunday, and especially Sunday morning. After, before that happens, this high's got to move out of the way, and when it does, we'll get into this side of the, uh, the, the flow, and, and we'll start to see a developing southwesterly or prefrontal gradient uh, develop. So here's the forecast for uh, overnight tonight, and uh, you can see that the winds have eased because that high pressure is moving closer, the gradient is weakening. And also, the wind is shifting now from more of a northerly component to more of a westerly component. And so we have um, lighter winds developing up in the northern part of the lake and generally backing with time uh, as you get up uh, further up the lake. By Saturday morning, that high is still moving south of Chicago. It's a slow process, but it is headed in that direction. Uh, and the gradient up in this area is going to continue to uh, back to the left. Now, for tomorrow's start, it looks like it could be pretty light uh, uh, just off of the starting line down in this area here. But as you'll see in the following charts, once this high, two things happen. This high moves further to the southeast, and here's that cold front I pointed out before, and you'll see that there's isobars starting to pile up ahead of that that's more gradient that is going to work its way down across the lake. So during the day on Saturday, we have a good chance of a reasonable prefrontal southwesterly or south-southwesterly breeze developing on the lake. So here's that forecast by Saturday morning. You can see there's still westerly flow uh, across much of the lake, kind of working its way uh, from west to east across the lake. And then by Saturday afternoon, here's that developing southwesterly gradient flow. And um, so basically the northern two-thirds of the lake are going to be into 10 to 15 and, and building pressure by early tomorrow afternoon. For, for the boats starting, though, they're still going to be down here in this weak gradient zone, and there'll be more chance of a lake breeze for just a short time uh, right, at the, uh, right at the start. In fact, this model is suggesting easterly winds at 1 o'clock tomorrow right around sort of 3 to 5 knots. Um, but that improves as we go forward in time. Here it is for Saturday, and that high's finally moved out to the uh, southeast, and here's our cold front starting to advance now across Lake Superior and into the UP, and you'll see that the uh, forecast calls for an area of showers and thunderstorms to developing out ahead of that. There is some uncertainty as the exact, for the exact time of where of the, uh, the frontal passage and where those uh, showers are going to develop. I'm going to show you a map in a little bit that has them a little bit behind where this, this map does. But it's, it's basically uh, Saturday evening into Saturday night when you'll need to be monitoring for the possibility of thunderstorms moving out ahead of that cold front. 
here's our wind field now for Saturday evening, and here's where that front lies, the big bold blue line up here to the north. And so ahead of that, we've got 20 knots of, of uh, south-southwest breeze over the sort of the northern half of the lake. And you'll also see that the wind has back built now down uh, basically to Chicago. It's not as strong, but we still have the uh, uh, southerly flow there, and, and it's building in a prefrontal mode. Up across here, the, uh, on the other side of the front, the wind is shifting to the north. Now here's a forecast for the rainfall at midnight uh, Sunday. So the shaded areas here is one model forecast. Again, this is just one model out of many. Um, where the rain has fallen in the previous three hours. So a lot of times people look at these charts and you need to make sure you understand what you're looking at. This is a chart of accumulated rainfall. Other charts give you a radar reflectivity. The radar reflectivity charts, forecast charts, tell you this is where we think rain is going to be happening at that time. The accumulated ones show you where rain has been happening in the hours prior to the map time. So this map time is 1, 1 a.m. Sunday, so over the previous three hours, rain has fallen in these areas. So the suggestion is that the rain is at the southern edge. The active rain uh, at this time is, is basically in this zone here, just right ahead of the front uh, frontal position. So you can see that there's some cells that this model is producing moving south uh, into the lake, across the northern part of the lake, uh, around midnight on Sunday. So again, you'll need to be on your toes from b just before sunset on Saturday uh, into early morning Sunday uh, for some of these cells uh, moving out. And once that front moves through, it brings a pretty good push of northerly wind, unfortunately. Um, and uh, so this is the forecast for midnight. We still have southwesterly prefrontal flow down here over the southern two-thirds of the lake. The northern third has shifted into uh, a northerly, and that northerly builds quite nicely, as we're going to see in the following charts. So here's the forecast for Sunday morning. It shows that front down across the southern part of the lake at this time, and high pressure building over the northern lake, and a, a tighter pressure gradient. The isobars are closer together, so that suggests that the wind speeds will be stronger um, by Sunday morning. And indeed, here's basically sort of 15 to 20 knots of northerly uh, on the lake Sunday with the front uh, just passing uh, into the southern third. And by midday on Sunday, the front pretty much has cleared the lake, and the whole lake now is in about 20 knots of northerly. I see that some areas seeing 25 knots of northerly uh, for a time on Sunday. And, um, you know, the boats, especially the boats that are uh, at the back of the fleet here, um, you know, it's a long fetch, and, and the sea state will be getting uh, quite large at the so it's possible to have three to six footers at this time. More than likely, there will be an issue of uh, the National Weather Service will issue small craft advisories for Sunday. Um, I, right now, I don't think it's going to be strong enough to warrant gale force, fortunately. And by Sunday evening, that front has cleared out well to the southeast. And now these isobars, that high pressure area is, is uh, up to the northwest. And now we're starting to see the wind just gradually ease uh, into later Sunday and uh, uh, <coughs> midnight on Monday. Um, still basically from the north, actually slightly east of north by this time. Uh, but easing back more into the sort of 12 to 16 range and, and generally lighter uh, as you get further to the north where you're closer to that high pressure area. Here's the forecast for Monday, and you can see that high now starting to settle over the lake. So those winds that we have uh, Monday evening, sorry, Sunday evening into early Monday are going to collapse very quickly during the day on Sunday. It's going to ease off very rapidly as this high comes in overhead. And so we've got basically good weather, sinking air, and uh, very light winds underneath that uh, high pressure area. Looking out to the west is the next frontal system, and you can see the gradient starting to increase with that. But that'll be probably later. That won't arrive until later on Monday or even Tuesday. So here's Monday morning at sunrise. You can see the winds getting more like 5 to 10 in the northern part of the lake, sort of 10 to 15 in the middle part of the lake, but still pushing uh, upper, mid-upper teens in the southern part of the lake, as, uh, but very light conditions across um, the UP and northern Wisconsin. 
On Monday, again, the, uh, the, now at this time during the day, that high has pretty much settled over the northern part of the lake, and that has killed the gradient breeze. So that gradient breeze we have at sunrise on Monday is going to disappear. And at this time, we've got very slack, uh, slack pressure across the upper part of the lake, and so that opens the door for lake breezes, and you can see them developing on each side. There's a sort of a northwesterly lake breeze on the Michigan shore and a south southwesterly uh, lower peninsula shore and a south southwesterly on the upper peninsula shore. And then by Monday evening, that pattern continues just as the high moves into uh, the Houghton area. And basically, we've got uh, light winds here with uh, lake breezes continuing across the uh, uh, UP shore and then down to the um, uh, Lower Peninsula Shore as well, but if you look out here to the west, uh, for for you late finishers, there is uh, some southerly that is starting to fill in at that time. And then here's the forecast chart for Tuesday. That's our next front coming in uh, for Tuesday morning, and a southwesterly uh, across much of the lake uh, on Tuesday. So here's some routes that I ran uh, with a few different boats, um, different different paced boats. The, uh, so basically starting very, um, in, uh, pretty much staying on rum as best you can, given the wind angle. If the wind is more to the right, in other words, if the wind is more north or even east of north, you may want to hedge a little bit closer to the uh, Illinois shore until the wind backs around more to the northwest and then make your move offshore. If the wind is, is uh, sort of north, northwest, or blowing a little bit more offshore, then I basically see a rum line. Of course, you basically want to get out into the middle of the lake and be ready for that next uh, breeze uh, change, and particularly that, that uh, change from a westerly into more of a southwesterly. Uh, so that's what I'm indicating here with this box. And then this middle part of the race, that's where the um, southwesterly looks like it, it uh, kicks in. And uh, that, or actually I should call it south, southwest breeze kicks in. Uh, and uh, then somewhere up in this area here is where you encounter the front. And there could be some showers and thunderstorms uh, ahead of that late Saturday, as I said, or into very early uh, Sunday morning. And then the cold front uh, passes, and you're basically tacking upwind here to, uh, to get into the finish, and then the wind will gradually moderate the further north you get into the lake. So actually a pretty interesting race with uh, some decent downwind conditions uh, tomorrow, but then a lot of upwind to actually make it to, um, uh, to Mackinac. So good luck, have fun, and be safe. All right.